Hi. So today's video is brought to you by one of my latest MMF bisexual romances called Bittersweet. If you like like crime edgy sort of stories and you like twists and turns beyond end, you're going to like that story. But more about that later. Right now, let's talk about BIDAR. Does it exist and how can you learn how to do it? So first, what is BIDAR? Well, BIDAR is a takeoff of something in America called GAYDAR and it's when uh, gay people believe that they can spot other gay people whether or not they're out about it. So BIDAR would be an equivalent to that, which is when people believe that they can spot bisexuals uh, just by looking at them. Question is, do I think that's real? Can people actually do this? My answer is absolutely, without a question. And here is why I say that, because of my life experiences. I'll tell them to you and you can make your own judgment. So I have been in um, four longer relationships in my lifetime. Two of them before I came out, two of them after. Uh, they've all been with women. Um, and each time I never kind of mentioned that I was bisexual. Uh, each time I started dating them and then within months of us dating, like, like four or five months, they admit to me that they have had sex with people of the same gender. Now, I, for the first two, I never told I was bisexual. So even after they shared that with me, two of those, both of those people said that to me, I did not share with them that I was bisexual. So it wasn't even like they, they became attracted to me because they knew I was bisexual. No, I was attracted to them not knowing they were bisexual, and yet somehow they kept on ending up being bisexual. So three out of the four women I dated were bisexual. And I was willing just to kind of write that off as coincidence. You know, these things just happen. There are a lot of bisexuals in the world, maybe. That's, the, that's what I was thinking. But then guys started coming out, guys, celebrities. And there haven't been a lot of them, but coincidentally enough, from I was a kid to, you know, let's say up till a couple years ago, I have been drawn to very few actors and models. To me, they're just like images on a screen. But there have been four, four male actors that I have been drawn to, not even like sexually, just drawn to, um, that I'm gonna mention. The first one was an actor by the name of Corey Haim. He was a child actor and he caused a lot of confusion within myself when I was a kid. The second actor is James Franco. And then there are two other actors whose names I won't mention. So uh, let's go back to Corey Haim. Is Corey Haim bisexual? Well, Corey Haim was famously best friends with another actor by the name of Corey Feldman. Um, unfortunately, Corey Haim died a few years ago. And after he died, Corey Feldman decided to write a book. And in it, he talked a lot about Corey Haim. And one of the things he said was that Corey Haim was clearly bisexual. Not only did he think that everyone was bisexual, but Corey Haim, according to Corey Feldman, continuously tried to convince Corey Feldman to have sex with him. So is was Corey Haim bisexual? Yeah, I, from the description of his best friend, yes, he was. James Franco. James Franco, um, a few, like a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, wrote an article where he interviewed himself in that article, he talked about how uh, he thinks of himself as being gay up to but not including intercourse. So um, does James Franco supposedly engage in bisexual activity? One would think yes. The third person, which is the first of the actors whose names I won't mention, is a humongous star, huge, humongous star. And I was always drawn to him for some reason. A few years ago, I meet this dude, the separate dude, um, and we become friends. And uh, one day we're chatting and uh, this superstar actor's name comes up about whether or not he could potentially be, you know, other than straight. And this dude says, actually, um, I grew up with him. Like there were a group of us and we all grew up together. And yeah, I, I knew him for years. Um, and the running joke within their group of friends was that this superstar actor was in love with one of the other guys. And they thought this because this superstar actor would continuously engage in homoerotic activity 
with one of the other guys. Um, and even after the other guys started teasing him about it, he wouldn't stop. So in the mind of my friend, he is at least, well, you can't was be bisexual. He has the capacity to have strong feelings for other men. That confirmed it enough for me. And then the fourth person, well, I've been watching him for years. Sure that he is also bisexual, but so far no evidence. He's just eight women. We'll see what happens. So it was after James Franco wrote that article that I started thinking, you know what? This ain't coincidence. There can't be coincidence that somehow just these very few people that I were drawn I was drawn to happened to be also, you know, engaging in other same sex sort of activity. So yes, Bidar absolutely one hundred percent exists as I believe it. So the question is, how could you start to hone your own Bidar? I think I have some advice for that. I have two pieces of advice to help you help develop your BIDAR. First is, you have to stop assuming that people are either straight or gay. And I know you're bisexual, and I know you like, oh, well, I don't do that. Just because you're bisexual doesn't mean you don't do that. For years, I would do that. I knew, from my, knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was bisexual, but yet every time I met somebody and they seemed not completely straight to me, my first thought automatically was, oh, they must be gay. And it was just automatic. It's not like I was telling anyone. It was just the thing that went on in my head, that person must be gay. You got to get over that. In order to be able to allow your BIDAR to flow, you have to stop automatically assuming that anyone who isn't straight is automatically gay. That's advice piece number one. Advice number two. Look for the signs. Okay, so this is the heart of what I'm talking about now. So what are the signs? The first sign would be presentation. And there are three aspects of the presentation that you can look for. One being, and, and these are all things that aren't like necessarily just, if one of these things are true, then obviously this person's bisexual. These are all things that kind of like add up. These things are really adding up. So the first piece of presentation that I always think of and go, yeah, that person got something else going on is, about their hair. Hair? Yes, hair. I say this because, um, you know, I was closeted as bisexual for a long time, and I, and I knew it, um, and no one knew it around me, and everyone around me seemed straight. So constantly I would be kind of dealing with this within myself. And whenever I would get under a lot of stress, that fact that I was different from everyone else would start to bubble up. And I would need some way to kind of clamp it down. And the best way I was able to do that, um, to kind of like relieve some of the pressure, but still kind of keep a hold of everything, was to change my hair. And yes, I know I have my head shaved now, but beforehand, I for a long time had a mohawk. Uh, before that, a few years before that, I was blonde. Um, before that, I had a bit of an afro. Uh, before that, I straightened my hair. And always I did it during times of stress, just to kind of like relieve the fact that I was different, uh, you know, relieve myself the fact that I knew that I was different and express it. So now whenever I see guys that, you know, it's not necessarily the fad, their haircut isn't exactly the fad, it's kind of extreme. My first thought is that person is obviously suppressing something. Um, and there's a good chance they're bisexual. So look for like the blue hair, the purple hair, the, all these unnatural colored hairs and look for unusual hairstyles with guys. That's one. Two is style of dress. Um, metrosexual dress, gender fluid dress. Um, when women kind of have a more masculine style to their dress, there could be something going on there. Uh, Westwood recently, that's a very bisexual look. Um, also for guys, you know, let's say the more metrosexual styles, just kind of like staying within that genre there. But again, just one of those symbols doesn't necessarily mean anything on its own. The third thing in terms of presentation 
is gender expression, which is the obvious thing. So obviously, if a person seems a little bit more queer, um, then there's a good chance that there's something else going on there past them just being completely straight. So that's presentation. Next is the way that I think most people picked up on me that I wasn't straight. Like when I was growing up, I never got, I never got, are you bisexual? I always got, you know, are you gay? And it wasn't because of anything like, you know, the way I interacted with men. Um, it wasn't about uh, anything other than the fact that when people watched me with women, I obviously had a different way of interacting with them. I was less aggressively sexual around them, although I was obviously attracted to them. And that sort of dance happened because I'm, I'm an extremely honest guy. And always when I was younger and in the closet, when I would deal with women, I didn't exactly know how I should interact because I figured eventually they would find out that I was bi, so would they not like me when they found that out? Um, how would things go when I tried to have sex with them? Like, would things work, you know, down there sort of thing? So I had all these things going on that made me interact with women in a sort of distant sort of way. I was clearly attracted to them, but there was this kind of just unusual interaction with the opposite gender that went on with me. And that is something I imagine many bisexuals experience as well. And so you can kind of look for that kind of unusual interaction. So those are the, so those are the interactions. The third thing that I'm going to talk about, I think is the clearest thing that kind of hones your BIDAR. And that's, and that's something that I think drove me when I went out with the women that I went out with and when I was attracted to the guys, the actors that I was attracted to, because, you know, they didn't dress in any particular way. They didn't actually present themselves in any particular way. But there were, I believe, micro expressions going on there that told me more than my conscious mind was picking up on. So what are micro expressions? Micro expressions are momentary expressions, either on your face or on your body, that tells everyone around you what you are truly thinking. I have a great example for you of this in real life, of uh, there being a micro expression and uh, showing something else going on. So you all know that in America there was an election and there was a certain person who was elected. He ran for 18 months to become president doing some really questionable things and saying some really horrible stuff. So you would think this man really, really wanted to be president and the way he spoke about it just made him seem like, oh yeah, he would just take this job and he would make America great again, right? Okay, so now let's take a look at a clip from election night just after he found out that he was going to be the next president of the United States. First, just take a look at it. So here it is. Did you notice anything? Remember, this is supposed to be the night that he accomplished this thing that he's been trying to do for 18 months. I'm going to pull out one frame from this video and you tell me what expression he's expressing. Here it is. Now I want to make it easy on you. What about now? Tell me. If you just saw that look and you had no context for it, what emotion do you think that that person would be experiencing? That man is experiencing extreme terror. How do we know? From that micro expression. And if you watch the video again, you'll, you won't really notice it unless you're looking for it. You just think, okay, well, he's looking around, maybe the, the sun's in his eyes, whatever else. But the truth is that that is a micro expression. So I think the way to truly pick up on whether or not something is going on are in these micro expressions. And that's what I picked up with Corey Haim. And that's what I picked up with James Franco and the woman I went out with. 
Specifically, I think it has to do with the eyes. I think that bisexuals who are closeted have a vulnerability about them, which kind of flashes in their eyes every so often, so much so that even actors who are trained to hide it, to fall into character, that they have these little tiny moments where these things flash out. So if you truly want to know if someone's bisexual, watch them closely. Watch maybe like a small gesture that might seem flirtatious just for a fraction of a second or for like a smile that is sort of out of place that might seem, oh, this person might be more attracted to some of the same sex, like, like a smile towards you or a vulnerability in the eyes. So these are the things that you can kind of really focus on to hone your own BIDAR. What do you think? Are there things that you have picked up on that uh, tells you whether or not someone else is bisexual? And again, you don't actually have to know bisexuals to know it. It's just this whole, this whole instinctual thing going on where you're picking up with some, you're picking up on something that you're seeing that is telling you more about that person. That's it. So if you would like to support the channel, if you like what's going on, uh, please go to Amazon, check out the t-shirts, or check out my book, Bittersweet. Um, it is, it's kind of a crime story between a guy who, uh, a guy who has a history with um, someone else. His friend becomes a cop and he becomes a criminal. Then eventually the criminal realizes that he might have feelings for the cop and uh, it's all about what he does about it. So if you like to support the channel, please check out that book. Otherwise, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I do many videos on bisexual topic, but I don't do them on a regular basis. So one, if you want to know when a new video comes out, you have to click on that little bell next to the subscription button and that will let you know when a new video is coming out. Until the next video, stay cooler, my bisexual friend. Stay cooler. Bye. And check out uh, Bittersweet. <laughs> Bye.